So I recently had the necessity of implementing some kind of broadcasting mechanism within my Angular 1 app. And um, basically what I had is a single source which emits events over time and then multiple potentially dynamic observers which listen for those events and process them if they're interested in them. Now in Angular 1 you would theoretically have the so-called dollar root scope for doing such broadcasts. But as you might know, the scope is no more present in Angular 2 and that's also the reason why I try to avoid it when possible in order also to facilitate the potential upgrade to Angular 2 later on. But anyway, it was also a very good occasion to try out RxJS on a real world example, basically. RxJS is basically a library for JavaScript that implements the reactive programming kind of paradigm. Now in this video, we're going to explore a very specific concept. So we are actually going to see how we can implement that publish subscribe mechanism, which I needed for my app. Now let's give it a go. So first of all, we are going to use npm cdn for grabbing the npm package of our rxjs bundle. And as a next step, we create basically a new instance of the so-called rxjs subject. And what a subject is, is basically one way for creating, especially for manually creating a so-called source object within rxjs. And on this source object, we can then broadcast values. But before broadcasting those values, we have to create a so-called subscriber. We can do that by simply invoking the subscribe function on that subject. And we give it a, a callback function basically, which takes then those values that are broadcasted. And in our simple example here, we simply do a console log statement, which prints out the value to the console. Great. So obviously right now we don't see anything because we didn't actually broadcast any kind of values. So our console will remain empty. So let's do that now. And this is really simple. So all we have to do is to invoke the next function and pass it some value like 40 as a number. And we immediately see also that it gets printed out on our console. We can obviously also give it auto values like hi there, which is a string and we'll get printed out just the same way. But now let's create something more realistic. So what we're going to do here is to create a simple UI. So let's create a button, give it an IE broadcast value. And then further down here, we create an output region where we will print out our values. Let's also here paste in some utility functions. And what these functions do is basically here that print function prints out something in that output region and I also added here an add click listener, which takes an ID and adds a click function. Great, so I think we are all set up. So now let's basically broadcast here the values only when the user clicks on that broadcast button. So we use that broadcast value ID, and then we give it a callback function. And here we actually do the same as we did before. We are invoking the broadcast.next. And in this example here, we simply broadcasting random numbers in order to see the difference when we broadcast multiple times. Awesome. So we also remove here a console statement and use our new print function here and pass in the value. Great, and as you can see, it already printed out our values here, which we are broadcasting here right still in the code. So let's remove that. And if you now click on the broadcast button, we'll all see the random numbers being printed out nicely. Cool. So now let's make the example a little bit more interesting. Let's create different kind of subscribers. So first of all, we basically replicate those buttons here, give them proper IDs so that we can reference them later. And now if we go back to our JavaScript code, now what we do here is basically to add that broadcast subscription only when the button is clicked. So as long as we don't click any button, we won't get any values because no subscribers are actually registered. And this somehow mimics the application where different kind of modules are potentially loaded lazily and we then register for the broadcast and then should get values from that point on. So this is simply replicating here the click listeners for of our buttons. And now we can also adjust a bit our print function here so that we can differentiate which subscriber prints out which value. Great, so if we now click that broadcast button, nothing will happen actually because we didn't register any subscriber. But if you now register subscriber two, we will see the values. 
And actually here's something wrong. Oh yeah, should use the plus here. Great. So again, if you now register subscriber two, we'll see that only subscriber two prints out values. If we add also subscriber one, also that one will get values and so on. So this example works nicely. As the next step, let's now add some unregister buttons just beneath our register buttons here. And this also mimics the behavior of my, my plugins within my application. So basically when the plugins, plugin gets loaded synchronously, it registers at the broadcast provider. And once it gets unloaded, it should also unregister. So now a simple example here, we add some further buttons here. Great, so now let's jump back to our JavaScript file. Okay, what we have to do now is to remember our subscription. So we create a variable subs1 and we assign the return value of our subscribe function here to subs1. And now we hook up and click listener on our unsubscribe button for our subscription one. And here basically if that subscription exists, what we do is simply invoke unsubscribe. It's really easy actually. And this, just as before, let's also replicate this for all of the remaining buttons here. Okay, so we get an error here. Oh, a semicolon. Great. Fine, so we should now be set up. Let's again test the value. So if you broadcast without a subscriber, we don't see anything. Now let's register subscriber two, get values, let's unsubscribe. It doesn't get any values. Okay, now they both get values. And if you unsubscribe to one, only, th only subscriber three will get values. Nice, so this works perfectly. Now, another use case that comes to my mind is basically when one subscriber is interested only in a particular type of events. In our simple example here again, we could say subscribe one only gets values which are below 50. This can be really easily achieved with RxJS because it has really a huge number of utility functions. Like we can here add a dot filter and implement a callback function. And here also we get the value, the broadcast value, and we simply say value below or equal to 50. As you can see, they are nicely chained together. So now we register subscriber one and subscriber two. We broadcast values. As you can see, 62 only gets printed out by subscriber two. And now that we get 49, it gets printed also by subscriber one. So you can see it works perfectly. And it's also really nice from a program perspective. It gets even nicer if you use ECMAScript six arrow functions because the syntax is really collapsed down to a single line. Now, if you read my RxJS article, which is attached to this video here, you can actually grab the link from the description. You might have also noticed that there was also a term the replay subject. So let's find out what's the main difference to the subject here. So we simply change this to replay subject. And now let's see. So we basically click three times on that broadcast button. And now we register, let's say subscriber three. What you see, interestingly, he will get all three values immediately printed out. So basically the replay subject replays all previous events to new subscribers. If you go on broadcasting values, he will just proceed normally and get those new values. And now if you activate subscriber two, he will get all the new values that have been sent previously. So all the six or seven values that got broadcasted. This is a really interesting behavior, which is quite different to the subject before. Now it's not really usable for my publish subscribe mechanism, but it might really turn out to be useful in some other kind of scenarios. Great, so the RxJS library can be found on GitHub under the Reactive X repository. The only important thing is that you look out for RxJS 5, which is the latest version of Reactive extensions for JavaScript. And it has basically been rewritten by a lead engineer Ben Lash from Netflix with basically performance in mind. And as you can see, it lives here under Reactive X GitHub organization, where you can also find other kind of implementations, like for PHP or Java, or Scala, Swift, or even Android. When you Google, you might from now and then land on a repository 
reactive extensions RxJS. And the difference here is this is the previous version, namely RxJS 4, which has been originally developed by Microsoft. So just watch out for that one, as there might be some differences in the API. Now, another article you might definitely want to check out, especially if you're new to reactive programming, is the article by Andre Stolz. He also has a video series on ACAD.io, which you might want to check out. This article gives you really an in-depth explanation of reactive programming with different kind of marble charts, how the events are broadcast, how they are dealt, what effects different kind of operations have on them. Another article I found particularly useful is an autogist also openly available is RxJS5 operators by example. And this basically lists all of the operators of RxJS5 with proper examples, which I found really useful when learning RxJS because you can look at some of those operations like buffer and get some meaningful example for it. Great, so I hope you enjoyed this video. Check out my blog on yuriastr.com slash blog for further articles on these topics.